some detail on this back wall. This is the first piece that went in. You can see all the nailers. A lot of nailers. So my dad didn't realize that these frames pop off. So we took these off. And we're going to use that as the template to cut out the window openings. So right here, there is a little bit of a gap. Thanks, Tom I screwed up again. <laughs> no, I'm telling everyone. And you didn't screw up. It's a learning process. So um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do to fix that, but I mean, this is already in place and it looks, it looks good. Maybe there's a piece of trim that we can put around or I can just caulk it or fill it with, I don't know, something. But it's really not that noticeable unless you know it's there like I do explain the process right now well what we did was improve on the wall paneling because i didn't realize that, that the trims came off and i should have asked because i wasn't sure that but i anyway so I, I agonized over this piece to make this the cut out that that's here but this is actually the way to do it because it it's helping hold the paneling to the wall as well as giving it a nicer appearance so that's what i intended and so we'll revisit this if necessary but we're going to finish the rest of them the right way that's my story i'm sticking to it let's do it working on the piece that my dad just cut out. Uh, took two hours to get it right, but hey, you know, perfection takes time. I started with the, where is it? 120 grit sandpaper, and then I went up to 220 grit. Used isopropyl alcohol to wipe it down. I did two coats. We are using this Kilts all-purpose primer. I'm doing two coats. And for our paint, we have this birch white uh, paint from Lowe's that we got. It's the most durable one they had. It was like $40 for this, but it's supposed to be just one coat and with the first piece of wall that we cut out, um, yeah, it seemed to be one coat was fine. <laughs> occurring in my old man fingers okay so we cut the window make sure it fits up because the cardboard I was able to push into crevices the plywood maybe be slightly bigger than but I'd rather have to trim it mm -hmm. than it'd be wrong right yeah I agree. here is the first bathroom wall these are not getting painted. These are getting the red guard on them, the waterproof membrane. So when that is all up um, and all the pieces are in place, we're going to start painting that and, you know, making sure the seams are waterproof as well. And we just nailed these to the earring strips that we had in place. Okay, what I want you to do is eyeball this edge, if you can. How so? I want you to watch that edge look like it's right on top of that and flush with the edge of the plywood okay so proud what you got there it's my jig this represents the curvature of the wall you know every now and then a, a spark of brain comes to life and i come up with ideas like this and it seems like it might be a waste of time but i'm trying to salvage material i can't keep wasting pieces of plywood so, so wait should we put it back up Notice the curve, smart. and this is this is the curved wall. This is the piece that's holding in in shape of the curved wall. See, it's always 
good to doubt yourself and question if you measured it right. Because all the time that's already gone into this one piece, and for it to be wrong would be horrible, right? Yeah. Let's try that. Let's make it work. Good. I mean, it can't always just be impulsive, especially when you're doing a full fine finish work. This is what we're doing. We're, we're at the stage where we're trying to represent, uh, and even though th that's getting covered by um, the Plastic. waterproof board, yeah, we should still try to make it as fit as tight and proper as we can, right? I agree. So it probably looks a little different in here. We have walls. My task today is to fill in all of the holes from the bread nails and the staples that we put in. This is the only seam that we have. This was one whole sheet. That was one whole sheet, and this was one whole sheet. tedious task and there are many many nail and staple holes but you can kind of see behind me what I've been doing um, I have to cut it short because I have to go to work in like an hour but I will resume this probably within a few days when I'm off again I'll give you a close-up of what is happening if you've never worked with the spackle I have never worked with spackle I'll just show you up close what I'm dealing with this is where I started and you can see where some of it is turning white um, like, oh, you can see them there. So you can see where it's turning white, uh, and then the center where there's the most, it's still kind of pink. Is it about that much? And did that. And I'm about halfway done with this back wall. But there is still much to do, this whole thing. <laughs> so, until next time. Hey guys, so I'm very bad at this vlogging thing and did not have my camera or phone, I should say, on me the past two days while we got some work done. It wasn't a lot, basically just finished up the walls and finished most of the spackling. But I want to just give you a little tour around of all the walls in place and the ones that still need some work. So let me show you. Everything has been sanded to the best of our ability. Um, you can see it looks pretty good. There's a seam here that we did our best to cover up. We think, since this is going to be the kitchen area, we think we might do those stick and peel tiles right here, but we're not sure, so I wanted to just paint it as best as I could. We're gonna put trim there, trim there. Oop, sneak peek of the bathroom. That'll be another video. We have the walls up here, and we have that wall, and we still need to cut out this wall piece, but that's how the cab's looking. Oh, and then trim here. There, there, probably not here just because the mattress is going to be covering most of this so it really doesn't matter. And we have this little weird piece and yeah, that is what we have going for the walls. Go. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Go. Go.